Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us again today. This is Workshop Quick Takes. Today is one of those jobs you hope that you never end up having to do, but sooner or later one finds you. This is a 2015 Honda Pilot and it has a cast aluminum oil pan. This here is the original oil drain plug from this 2015 Honda Pilot with a cast aluminum oil pan. Yeah, there's a reason this is not installed. Now, we got this vehicle at about 100,000 miles. It's up to 127,000 now. So I've changed it five or six times, and I don't feel like I've cranked down on the oil not excessively. But then again, I haven't been using a torque wrench, so maybe I've been putting a little bit too much on it. But it also might have been subject to abuse by a previous owner. Who knows? In any case, yes, I stripped out the threads on the oil pan. And whether it was all my fault or not, I'm the one who's got to fix it. So let's see what that takes. Fortunately, there is a possible solution. This says M14 by 1.50, which is the same size as the nut over there in theory. I agree with you in theory. However, looking on the back of the bolt here, there are two letters SO, size over. This here also has an elongated tip with a crosshatch and some cutting threads on it. For the record, this is Dorman 65217. There are many others available on Amazon and elsewhere. This here is sized over at maybe about M14.1. Additionally, it has these cutting threads on the end and this hollow here. It will try and tap out new threads and suck the debris it creates down into this hole. And then you remove this back out again, clean it really good, reinstall it, and in theory, you're done. In theory, communism works. That being said, I don't like the idea of even risking having a little bit of metal left inside the oil pan because you have no idea where that will end up. So, even though I just did an oil and filter change on this, I have picked up another five quarts of oil. This here uses about four and a half or so. What I'm going to do is catch all the oil that is in the engine now through a paint filter. I'm then going to run this, try and cut the threads, and if it secures correctly, we're done. But I'm then gonna take the old engine oil that I've run through a paint filter, pour it back through the engine now that I'm done cutting, and hopefully, if I left any filings in the bottom of the pan using this, it'll wash those out. And again, I'll run it through the paint filter the second time just to see, because I'm curious. Then I will go ahead and refill it with the new oil that I've purchased, but since the filter only has less than 500 miles on it, I'm going to just continue using it. In theory. What if this doesn't work? What if I try to get this in there and it won't torque down? Then we have a bigger problem. This would potentially be the next step. This here is a non-standard size, one size larger than M14. This is an M15 by 1.5 bolt set along with a tap. The problem is, if I drill that hole out to the correct size for this tap and then run this tap up in there, I almost certainly will have metal filings left in the oil pan. The proper way to do the job if it comes to this is to drop the oil pan, but that potentially would require having the vehicle on the lift to really do it properly and then you got to make sure you get it sealed correctly back on, blah blah blah, slightly outside of my expertise and available tools, so I'd probably have to go to a shop at that point. Now, I mentioned that there's less than 500 miles on this oil filter, so you might be asking, well, what did you do to seal that off while you were looking for the solution? Let's go underneath and look. Okay, there it is. It's now supported on two jack stands, and I've got the jack lightly tensioned under the front lifting point just for backup safety. If you're curious about the possibilities and pitfalls when lifting a vehicle, I have previously done a video called Lifting Follies on this channel, using this vehicle as a demonstrator. So check that out if you're curious how this can go right and wrong. Okay, there's what I've got in there as a temporary plug. This is a rubber expansion plug that I found at the auto parts store. So I put that in there as a temporary to hold things in place while I figured out what the solution this was gonna be. Okay, this here is a package of mesh paint strainers. What these are normally used for is to filter lumps out of paint before you pour it into a spray gun. So correspondingly, they've got a really fine but free-flowing mesh right there, and oil normally will go right through it. But if there is anything in the oil that shouldn't be there, hopefully this stops it and we can examine it. Now, I'm not expecting anything in this first pass. I'd be more interested to see what comes out in the second pass. But in any case, we'll run the oil through it the first time as well just to see. I have come thoroughly cleaned and dried out this old Folgers can. And now I'm going to refill it with a substance similar to that which came out of it in the first place, then pour it through here and go through the filter process. This was originally hand tightened only, which I did. Now I need to loosen it. And you know what? I see a small amount of oil seepage, so this was working fine as a temporary solution, but definitely not as a permanent one. Oops. Oh, 
Well, so much for a neat, clean job. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit fidgety because it's uh, overfilled here, but let's try. Well, so far the only thing I'm seeing in there is a piece of plastic that fell in there. It's round and circular, so I know it didn't come out of the oil pan. But now I'm gonna save this and use that as wash oil after we get done tapping the thread under there. If you're curious, that's what the expansion plug looked like. There's a screw shaft through here. You turn this top piece and it has a couple detents just to lock it so that it snaps in place and doesn't pop back out. Once it gets good and tight, then it actually compresses that piece of rubber up into the plug and sort of holds. The hole we're about to tap should be good and lubricated, but just in case, make sure we've got plenty of oil on here for cutting surface. Well, we don't need the washer while we're cutting, do we? I believe the package said this is an 18 mil. Okay, 18 it is, so this is how we're gonna have to turn it. We have two choices. We'll see which one gives us the best results under there. The hardest part is gonna be starting this thing straight. It kinda wants to catch on some old threads in there, but it also kinda wants to go sideways. Okay. It's definitely got a grip. It does feel like it's chasing the old threads, so that's a good sign. Worst case, because it has that beveled front, it should be able to self-center. Okay, yeah. It looks like it's pretty well lined up with the original hole now. Okay, I'm getting more resistance now, so I think I'm cutting through some of the good threads that were still left at the back. Oh, that's a lot of resistance. Okay, that's a lot of resistance, so I'm gonna back it out, and then chase it back in again. This process is kind of tedious. It's tempting just to try and run it all the way in and call it good. Problem is, if you do that, you may actually start pulling out threads again or cross-threading. So once it starts to get a little bit too tight, back it out again like I'm doing here. Then go in again and just try and get the next, you know, quarter, half turn past where you were before. What you should probably do now is pull this out and see if I've galled up the threads with aluminum because that can happen on steel bolts. It's actually compressing in those two threads on the T. Not just filling them in, but compressing them in. So we're doing something. Hmm. It almost feels like I might need to cut the end off that bolt. I have a feeling if I keep going the way I do it, I'm just going to tear off the threads I've created. Do you see how I've compressed those way in? I think this hole might be tapered a bit. I don't think there's anywhere else for these threads to go in there. Okay, comparing old to new, I don't think I want to chop off quite all the end here, but I'm going to take a few threads off and then taper the end like that using the bench grinder and see where that gets us. If you see that WD-40 smoking off of there? That gives you an idea just how much friction is involved in cutting and lubrication is at least reducing that. Alright, now we go hit that out on the bench grinder and see if it uh, works as an oil pan bolt. The fact that I'm having to cut and grind this down like this, I wonder if that's the reason why the auto parts store didn't even have a recommendation in their catalog because without modifications, I don't think this would work. But here's a sanding block. Let's clean it up and find out if it goes back in there. Alright, bolt with washer. Will it install? Still loose on the plastic. Okay. Oh, there we go. I think. That is an oil pan bolt. Okay. It at least feels like an oil pan bolt again, so that's a good sign. <laughs> now here's where the fun begins again. I'm gonna take this old plug, jam it back in here again, and then I'm going to pour some of the filtered oil that we have back in here. 
Then I'm gonna try and hold this up this time, pull this plug out, and when I do, I'm hoping I wash away any metal filings I left in there. Okay, I've now added back about three quarters of the oil. Okay, I really hope that is the proper torque because that's uh, plenty tight. Cross fingers that this solves the problem for a while because if this oil pan has to drop, that requires this section of the exhaust, this front plastic panel. I'm not sure how exactly they get at all of this and then it has to be resealed and put back up. It's not a job I can do. So if it does come to that, it's going into the shop and I'm probably paying about seven, 800 bucks in labor all in. All right, this is a four pack of paint filters which means we can pull out another one, refilter the oil that we just captured again and just for curiosity's sake, let's see if we needed to do that. Did we capture any metal filings? Okay, what have we got here? Yeah, 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 oh my. I'm not sure how well we can see them on camera, but yeah. Those are aluminum filings from the uh, cutting. A little piece of aluminum there, a little piece of aluminum there. Yeah. Definitely a cutting waste there. That's why we flushed the oil out like that. Is it a bit of a waste of oil? Unfortunately, yes, but on the other hand, it's no different than whatever else you might have to use to clean out a, something contaminated with metal when you're done. So it's disconcerting to see that many pieces. I was hoping for maybe one or two random pieces of thread material, but I'm seeing a lot of small little metal flakes in there. I'm hoping I got them all. Well, surprisingly, that took very little damage on the nitro rubber or whatever that is there. So even though it's not recommended for reuse, I'm going to save it for an emergency use because, hey, if that replacement nut strips out again, I'll probably need to reinstall this until I can get it to the shop and pay lots of money. All right, we should be done under here. Just have to do some oil cleanup after we get the car out of the way. But for now, let's drop it. Got the engine cover off. It's almost impossible to get the oil without removing it. And here we are. Now we just need to add back all the oil we removed. To make life easier, I like to save the jug from the last oil change and then put the first couple quarts in it. And that way I can just tip it over like this and not spill it all over the front of the engine. Okay, that's four we've added back so far. Let's check the dipstick and see what's going on. Yeah, right on the money. Whew. Well, that was a day. Probably, I don't know, one to two hours all in. More if you had to run around and get parts. I mean, I ran into the problem last week doing an oil and filter change. And so I came back this week with everything in hand ready to just make the project go. But in any case, it might be tempting just to try and slam the bolt in there and then walk away. But as we saw, there were two problems with that. One, this apparently has some kind of tapered fit inside the oil drain plug hole. And so we had to modify a size over bolt in order to actually get it to fit correctly. Also, it was worth doing the extra step of flushing out the oil pan and hole after getting everything cut and fit and being sure that we were ready to go. As we saw in the filter, there was some leftover cutting waste in there, and that is not something you want to be circulating in your engine. Hopefully, if you encounter a situation like this, you've now got some ideas on what to do. Thanks for joining us again today. We'll see you again next time. Has anyone seen my phone?